there, it's Lara here. This time not with Witchy Wednesday, but with another video for you um, on the planet Chiron. So this is the first video that I'm doing outside the Witchy Wednesday series. And um, I chose Chiron for a few reasons. Chiron, I have a close personal relationship with Chiron in my own life. Um, and, you know, I feel like Chiron symbolizes healing in many ways. It's known in astrology as the wounded healer, and I'll explain why as we go through this video here. But, um, you know, healing has been a major theme in my life, and the more that I work with people, um, you know, and just through good old life experience and, and personal relationships, I realize how significant this concept of healing is for all of us really and so and i think it's it's quite timely um right now in particular that this is something that we talk about chiron is going to be making a major shift into the the sign of aries on april 17th it's right now in pisces but i'm going to sort of save that for the next video i'm going to do this in two parts in this video i'm going to talk about um, you know, a little bit about the background um, of Chiron, the mythology, and how this plays out in our um, in our birth charts. And so, so Chiron, the basics, you know, and then in the next video, I'm going to talk specifically about the transit that Chiron is about to make from Pisces to Aries. So, um, I want to say thank you so much for being here. If this is your first time to my channel, I really appreciate it. I would love it if you would subscribe and comment and let me know if this is helpful to you. Um, and, you know, if you've been around since I started doing Witchy Wednesday, then I really appreciate that. And I hope you've remembered to subscribe too. There's a little black button uh, in the bottom corner here that says subscribe. It's pretty small, but if, if you haven't subscribed yet, just click that button and that's how uh, that's how you become a subscriber. And sometimes I do, um, you know, giveaways for free readings, which I'm actually doing right now. If you go to this week's Witchy Wednesday video, you can find out how to enter there. So, and also, of course, if you want a, um, a personal reading with me, then please click on the link below and follow, you know, head over to my website and you can see what's on offer there. And, um, and I can set you up. Okay, so um, some of what I am going to relay to you here is my own personal experience, my own knowledge, different research I've done on Chiron, um, you know, and also some of it is pulled from um, a specific article written by a woman named Melanie Reinhardt who wrote a book on Chiron called Chiron the Healing Journey way back when it was discovered around that time. And um, so she's kind of an expert. And, uh, you know, I've, I've pulled a few tidbits of information from her. And uh, I'm going to share that with you. So if you see me kind of glancing over here, it's just I'm just taking a look at my notes because I don't want to forget to tell you something important. Um, first of all, if you see your birth chart, if you know your birth chart or if you've had a reading with me and um, I always send a copy of the birth chart to the client and that's yours to keep. And every astrology reading, every birth chart reading I do, I always give a little astrology 101 lesson um, just at the top of the reading to put things in context for you and so you can sort of look at the chart and it makes a little bit more sense. Um, and so I want to show you the symbol for Chiron. So this is what it looks like. It looks like a little key, a K with a circle on the bottom. So if you're looking at your own birth chart, look for that symbol and you will see Chiron. That's Chiron. And, um, you know, sorry, I have a little, I have a hair that's tickling my face here and it's driving me bonkers. So apologies for that. Anyways, um, we are raw and uncut here. So depending on where Chiron falls in your chart, you know, it will have a different impact. It will be more significant in that life area for you. Okay, so let's just talk about just the basics here. So Chiron was discovered in 1977 when it was in the zodiac sign of Taurus. Now, um, 
the weird thing is, is it actually, you know, if they went back in time and looked at different, uh, different photos and that kind of thing, um, and saw it there long, long, long before 1977, like in the previous century, but it was sort of hidden in plain sight, which is kind of interesting because it really speaks to partly what Chiron is about. Um, so it was discovered by a guy named Charles Cowell and, um, the jury is still kind of out on whether it is a comet or a planet, sometimes called a planetoid. Um, but in astrology, we, we generally refer to it as a, as a planet or planetoid, but it is part of this group of celestial bodies called centaurs. Um, and I won't delve too deeply into that, but I will put a link to Melanie Reinhardt's article um, below here, below, below the video, so that if you're interested in delving further, you can go check that out and learn more. Um, so Chiron is fairly small. It's only about 180 kilometers in diameter, but it's, it, it packs a punch, right? Um, and sort of points to those things in our own lives that we may underplay or maybe sort of hidden in plain sight um, may seem small at first glance but really have a big um, a big impact so um, oh yeah the other thing I wanted to say is it, it mostly orbits between Saturn and Uranus but it has a very erratic orbit so it spends far more time in some signs than in other signs. So it spends about seven, eight years in Pisces and Aries and only about 18 months to two years in um, Libra and Virgo. But it takes around 50 years to come back to the place where it was at the time of your birth, right? So it's it's a, like a 50 year cycle to come back to its, its point of uh, origin, so to speak. So, and that is called the Chiron return. And I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a few minutes. So um, one thing I actually found out about Chiron that I didn't know prior to is that it has this really long tail that's about 300,000 kilometers long. And it's, it appears to, to kind of turn on and off because sometimes it's visible and sometimes it's not. So who knows what that's about, but interesting factoid <laughs> kind of thing. Um, and I want to read you just a short quote from Melanie Reinhardt that really does kind of sum up what Chiron is about, right, for us. And so she says, and this is from her book, Suffering is present in everyone's life, but relating with wisdom and compassion to our own experiences turns poison into medicine. Thus, we develop the awareness which both accompanies and also initiates new stages of our spiritual journey. That really sums up what Chiron is all about for us. Um, I do want to just touch on the mythology a little bit as well. Um, you know, astrology is rooted in mythology. And so it's kind of uh, helpful to, to know about the mythology piece. So Chiron in mythology was a centaur, right? Half human, half horse. And the centaurs weren't known um, to be very civilized, but Chiron wasn't like the other centaurs. He was actually very, very intelligent, very civilized. Um, he was a teacher. He was um, a healer. He was a shaman, an oracle. He was very wise, very compassionate, very talented um, in the healing arts. And the interesting thing about him was, first of all, he was immortal, so he could not die. And he was wounded by um, a poison dart. And the poison was um, of his own making. So he was wounded and the wound would never heal. And so hence the name, the wounded healer, right? So he, he had to go, you know, he had to exist and carry on about his, his business um, with this gaping wound all the time. And 
there's another character in mythology, Prometheus, um, Uranus, and he was punished for stealing fire from the gods and bringing it down to earth, to humans. And Zeus punished him and he was condemned to having his liver perpetually pecked at, eaten out by, um, by birds, by, I think it's an eagle, if I recall. And so, then his liver would just regenerate and regenerate. And this is, you know, this is what he, he had to endure. And so Chiron went to Prometheus and said, listen, let me take your place. I'm already, I've already got this gaping wound that won't heal. I already have perpetual wounding, unhealable wounding, and I'm immortal. So why don't you let me take your place? And um, so Prometheus did. And as a result, they were both freed. And Chiron, um, you know, ascended to the constellation. And so... So that's the story of Chiron in mythology. And so he, you know, he did something despite his own pain and wounding and suffering. Um, he did this very honorable, admirable, um, self-sacrificing thing, right? And so this speaks to, to how Chiron, um, how we can kind of use Chiron in our, in our lives. So Chiron is the place in our birth chart, where we have come into this um, lifetime and may have dealt with this many lifetimes um, up until now with this primal wounding, right? This unhealable wound. Um, And so whatever area of our birth chart Chiron falls in, whatever house it falls in for us in our birth chart is really where we... um, where we have this primal wound. And this is something that, you know, oftentimes it can be things like, you know, it's something everybody else is sort of aware of, but we're too close to the situation. So we're not aware of it. Or it's something that is so painful to us that we just, we can't go there. We just refuse to go there. Um, it's something, it's like an inescapable kind of situation, right? That we were perhaps born into, um, or have had to endure. And so the key to, to working with Chiron is to, to go there, to acknowledge this wounding, um, you know, to admit it, to go into that shadow to do the healing work, anything we can do to help us, um, you know, excavate this and shine a light on it and deal with it as best we can. And ultimately to accept because, right, this is an area, again, it's kind of like we can deal with it. We can, we can learn to cope with it. We can accept it, but we're not going to erase it. It's not going to go away ultimately. Um, and so we need to, we need to face it and we need to accept it. Right. And, um, and by doing so, we then are empowered and this becomes, um, you know, an area in our life where we are very resilient and powerful. And then we can share that with others. And part of how we deal with our own Chiron wounding is by, healing others and oftentimes others that have the same wounds as us. That is how we, um, we kind of cope, right? With our own wounding. We may not, it it can be an area where we, we cannot necessarily heal ourselves, but we may be able to heal others. And so, you know, rather than trying to fix and fight and, um, repress, (laughs) and ignore um, our wounding, our primal wounding, we need to face it. And we need to, um, you know, we need to realize that it is what it is. Um, It's interesting because, you know, I, I know somebody who used to hate that phrase, it is what it is, but probably because it was a person who really didn't want to face 
uh, the Chiron wounding, right? And so, and that's how this can play out for us. It can, it can play out one of two ways, you know, partly what I've just, just discussed that by going into that shadow, um, by going there, so to speak, you know, great gifts and powers are bestowed upon us. Um, and we become the shaman, right? Or we can choose to ignore the wounding. We can refuse to see it, refuse to acknowledge it, refuse to admit it, um, you know, just just plain and simply, um, you know, out of fear, out of discomfort, it's too painful, uh, whatever. Um, and when we choose to do that, then, you know, what can happen is the universe goes, you're not going to face this, so I'm going to shove it in your face, right? Kind of thing. Or, you know, you're not going to face this, and so your suffering will continue um, until you do accept it, and you do acknowledge it, and you do your best to to heal it as best you can, right? Fully well knowing that there's always going to be a scar there. You're never going to be able to erase that but you can sort of purge the poison, so to speak, right? Um, it can also, a Chiron can also indicate um, the area in our life where we kind of feel like the black sheep. We kind of feel isolated, you know, outside the, the crowd kind of thing. So uh, it can have that impact as well. And, um, you know, again, just to emphasize, like when we, courageously make the choice and it's always a choice right we we always have the choice to be the victim or the hero always um astrology can give us probabilities possibilities likelihoods um you know can talk about how the energies are playing out um but we always have the free will and we always have the choice how we react to things how we deal with things whether we choose to acknowledge them or not, or repress them, right? Um, so when we courageously kind of go into that darkness, then, you know, that's where the treasure is. It, there's a quote by mythologist Joseph Campbell that goes, and I might be paraphrasing here, but something like, the cave we fear to enter holds the treasure we seek, right? That's a very Chiron quote. Um, also, you know, the, the, um, the Leonard Cohen, uh, lyric, there's a crack in everything. And that's where the, or the, there's a crack where the light gets in. I can't remember the exact lyric right now, but you know, um, or we grow stronger in the broken places, right? Those, those are all sort of Chiron phrases, um, perhaps cliche, but cliches are cliche for a reason because they're usually true. <laughs> so, so, um, you know, just to speak a little bit to what I mentioned at the top about the Chiron return. So at about age 50, 51, Chiron will come back to the place that it was when we were born. And this is called our Chiron return. And, you know, you, you can see it play out in our society that um, this is often the time of midlife crisis, so to speak, right? And that's because those are the people that refuse to deal with their Chiron. <laughs> Okay, I'm letting you in on a secret there, which shouldn't be so much of a secret, but it is the truth. Um, so, you know, we, we kind of get the second chance at that age with Chiron and how we choose to, to deal with that. I really believe will have an impact on our quality of life moving forward from there. So, you know, at this sort of midlife point we can um choose to to face our demons if we haven't done so yet and if we have fantastic um or or sort of accept our wounding and you know that kind of thing and and start using that to help others help the world at large um or we can keep repressing and denying and all of that kind of stuff and i i i really believe that um those people that you you see that do not uh, age very well, or they become, you know, miserable old people. Um, those are people that really just, 
you know, they just didn't have the the courage or their support or the willingness or the awareness or the consciousness or whatever to to deal with their Chiron. So, and perhaps their Pluto, but that's another video. <laughs> anyway, um, and their North Node too, yet another video. But so I just want to take a look and see if there's anything that I missed here that I really wanted to talk to you about. Um, well, I think, you know, really the only thing is that, uh, you know, I mentioned where Chiron falls in your birth chart is the area that you will really kind of uh, experience this, this energy. But as Chiron transits through the Zodiac, it will hit different areas of your chart, different houses in your chart, right? And so as it moves through these different houses, it will trigger healing cycles, um, I guess is the best way to put it. On a collective level, we'll see these themes play out and also for us individually and our own personal lives. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the next video um, when I talk about Chiron transiting into Aries from Pisces. Um, but, you know, just as it transits, it will it will sort of have this this effect. When Chiron, I'm going to give you a little example, when Chiron first um, just to, to show you how this can play out globally. When Chiron was first in Aries, it was in the 60s, um, sort of late 60s. And we had things like um, the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. and Robert Kennedy, or JFK, for example. Um, and, you know, so that's just one tidbit. I'm going to talk more about that in the next video, too. And when Chiron transited into Pisces, we had the BP oil spill right at the transit. So you can see how this plays out on a collective level and that translates um, to the individual as well, right? And so it's like the macrocosm and the microcosm. So, um, you know, again, wherever it falls in your birth chart is the place where really you've come in with that primal wound, that, that unhealable wound um, that if you have the courage to, to address and to accept will make you resilient and powerful and uh, a healer in your own right, right? Um, and then as it transits through the zodiac houses, like the houses of your chart, um, you'll feel it in in th in different areas, right? The healing cycle kind of thing. So um, I don't yet offer this, but I have been really contemplating offering a reeling, a reading that focuses at least somewhat on Chiron in the natal chart. So if that's something you might be interested in, I'd love to to gauge interest in that, and you can let me know either by commenting below here or emailing me um, info at laranewellbarrett.ca. Or, you know, connecting through my website, uh, PMing me on Facebook, the link to that's below too, whatever. So I, I hope you found this, um, you know, insightful and informative and perhaps helpful in some way. I'd love to know. Please do let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and like and comment. Um, and I'm sure when I'm finished this video, I'm probably going to think of 50 more things that I wanted to tell you, but maybe those will come out in the next video. So stay tuned for that as well. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. And I will, um, I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.